Hello and welcome to the history of Tumblr, how one website confused a generation of girls with woke propaganda and gender ideology. My name is Laura Becker, I'm a detransitioner, and I write and make videos on cultural issues happening today through a psychological lens. I joined Tumblr in 2011, when I was 14. Back then, it was the place for hipsters to share their urban outfitters fashion, post rage comic memes, troll people, repost cat gifs, and curate their aesthetics blogs with moody black and white photography. For me, as an eccentric social outcast and skeptic of pulp culture, I was hesitant to try anything new, modern, or based in social media. But as I had just made my first Facebook account to attempt to have a social life, I immediately saw that Tumblr was nothing like Facebook. Tumblr was cool, laid back, underground, a dark navy blue layout and interface that encouraged anonymity through identification via icons and URLs that were never supposed to be one's actual real human face or name. It was a backdoor social club where everyone was encouraged to keep it secret from normies or most people who use Facebook, like parents, family, or the average person from school. When I first posted on my blog, I felt like I was sending random messages out into the universe with nothing being off limits, too unconventional or off the wall to say. It was the perfect place for someone like me who felt too anxious to speak up in person, but it had a deep mind full of jokes and ideas waiting to be shared. As much as I owe to Tumblr for helping my social life, confidence, and creativity, I am only speaking about these positive attributes to illustrate how and why a young person might find a home on Tumblr, only to then be exposed to antisocial spaces and content that now must be excavated. Because for every aesthetic photo of a girl in an oversized hoodie sitting under a neon light smoking a cigarette. There's a photo of an identical looking girl with a caption over it about how she will never be good enough. For every meme about a rat wearing a top hat, there's a meme about how cis straight people need to be exterminated. And for every text post teaching young people about some random kooky historical event, there's a text post about how capitalism has corrupted everything to the point where nothing matters at all. And it's okay to be a depressed piece of shit. This is a anonymous submissions depression blog. You are not alone, darling. So these are confessions that everyday people would anonymously send in to post. And it says, I wake up wanting to kill myself. I go to bed wondering why I didn't. Pretty depressing, sad, black and white, minimalist aesthetic. You're not alone, darling. This is a very feminine type of blog. So mostly what you're seeing here are teenage girls, social contagion around self-harm and anorexia, depression, suicide. There's a lot of these types of blogs. As I was writing classic rock fan fiction requests for my mutuals at 16, my younger sister was finding aesthetic self-harm imagery that caused her to start cutting her arms in middle school. All the time I spent snickering at extensive threads of clever meta memes that critique Tumblr culture and its users, I was also learning that part of Tumblr culture was unrestrained emotional reactivity, hyper-policing of wrong think, and an incessant cavalier attitude of self-defeatist humor and behavior. This is a black and white graphic of someone with a speech bubble saying, I'm getting better, and then their head is filled with all of their true thoughts. I think I'm insane, why can't I accept myself? They're lying. Help. I need to be alone. My thoughts scare me. I'm disassociating. I'm gonna hurt them. It's very nihilistic and it promotes a culture of learned helplessness and stuckness in the mental illness, as well as identification with the mental illness. I believe this started as a platform for alternative free expression, especially for all variety of geeks and outsiders, including the LGBT community. Tumblr founders and users did not predict the ship from fun after school online social engagement to 24-7 demi-existence immersed in the digital universe of the platform. There were jokes about how Tumblr was addicting and how it was sometimes more of a welcoming and friendly place for introverts and socially awkward people than real life spaces, but it was always discussed in terms of how inclusive and positive it was. The super hulocks and homestruck, which I still haven't bothered to learn what that is. Fans could nerd out about TV characters, romantic tensions, or how gay people could find and support each other. Somehow, Tumblr skewed from a little awkward but overall charming and highly supportive community for diversity. Same-sex equality culminated in the unanimous celebration of the 2012 legalization of gay marriage in the United States to the rabbit hole niches of an overarching echo chamber of woke social justice ideology with little to no room for nuance or authentic diversity of thought. 
I experienced this development from a quirky avant-garde website encouraging people to be weird and creative and have access to alternative methods of knowledge and learning, to a place where it was considered obligatory to list your privileges, pronouns, disabilities, diagnoses, and sexualities in your profile, or you might be considered problematic, aka toxic, racist, sexist, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, biphobic, lesbophobic, nbphobic, ableist, classist, capitalist, a Nazi, a bigot, a conservative, alt-right, hateful, narcissistic, and worst of all, an ignorant, straight, white male, or just as deplorable, a sympathizer for any of those unacceptable types of people. On Tumblr and other internet spaces, it wasn't just overt publication of, or exposure as, a problematic person with problematic views or behaviors was unacceptable. Virtually any hint of allegiance with a called out or canceled group, or any slight past involvement or mistake of toxicity could and would be distributed digitally for collective public shaming. The no-win culture of inevitable status of toxic personhood was especially evident in this space because humiliation often did not stop even when the shamed party confessed to their wrongdoing, promised to do better, unlearned their toxic behaviors, or provided examples of positive character development. Rather, the shame cycle continued at the whim of the accusers for their own entertainment or virtue signaling, and would be referenced again as a public record of toxic behavior that was used to keep that person and all others in line with acceptable opinions or behavior. If a user deleted their account, this was the ultimate sign of victory for the accusers, because it proved the person's ultimate guilt and was used as evidence of their wrongdoing and cowardice. This was the social culture young people were using on Tumblr to monitor each other's negative behavior. But what then was the behavior viewed as positive and celebrated? As I experienced, it used to be those who were original and clever who became popular based on funny text posts or unique blogs which created GIFs and fandom materials for public use. I can attest that there are still a variety of blogs creating beautiful artwork, posting witty puns, and providing helpful mental health or student resources. The overwhelming popular site culture has amalgamated into a state of political and social queerness. This is a graphic from 2021 where Tumblr names itself the queerest place on the internet. And this is a post from Tumblr staff. There's no way around it. This has got to be one of the queerest places on the internet. How queer, you ask? Apparently, folks on Tumblr are 193% more likely to identify as part of the LBTQIA plus community than any other social media platform. That's you. It's most of you. It's a hell of a lot of you. Let's talk about you, the LGBTQIA plus community on Tumblr. You who uplift each other, back each other up, uphold each other's truths. You make Tumblr the supportive place it is. Hey, whether you're out and proud or just starting to figure things out, queer Tumblr has your back, and it touches every fandom and ship and interest you can imagine. We have fine Finally, canonical declarations of love, ratty allies, gay AC and H villagers, pronoun positive worms on strings, and frogs. So many frogs. No matter what, you'll find support and acceptance, and if you need it, a little bit of guidance. This is who you are. Not just in June, but every day of the year. We wouldn't have it any other way. So here you see it coming straight from the top of this website. This is the way the staff posted and spoke. They're using language of the community, young people running this, using language of queer ideology. Remember, these are uplifting people's truths. It's all about uplifting, truth, and supporting. And of course, a bunch of random fandoms, and especially <laughs> fandoms that are clearly age regression based, like Worms on Strings, if you know what that is. And how queer is Tumblr? By their own research, Tumblr announces itself as being 193% more likely to identify as part of the LGBTQ community. 193% of its users are more likely to identify as queer. So this is the stewing culture of 2021. It had arisen to this level. It was percolating for a while. Remember, I joined in 2011. So you can see how it's progressed. 
I suspect that like many lesbian, gay, and bisexual organizations, communities, and supporters, what's the hard-earned battle of same-sex marriage legalization in America was won. There was a simultaneous energy to keep civil rights momentum and resources flowing positively for the community, a closing gap of notable community needs, and a growing number of people feeling comfortable coming out and creating visibility for their sexual and gender-related issues. This was happening widely because Tumblr had always been ahead of the curve on LGBT acceptance. It was no longer radical or quirky to be homosexual or gender non-conforming. Instead, most attention turned to the tagalongs of the LGB movement, the T's. Part of the push for trans obsession may have also been inspired by the suicide of Leela Elkhorn, a 17-year-old boy who identified as a trans girl who published his suicide note on his Tumblr account in 2014. Here's a selfie of Leela Elkhorn. Leela published a cued post, a post that you could delay in its scheduling. He posted a suicide note and then died by suicide, and then the post was later published at its scheduled time. So this became a huge deal on Tumblr in 2014. Here we have the infamous genderbred person. This was at one point the most widely distributed gender-based graphic on these topics. It shows this abstract and idealistic view of subjective identity where each aspect of sexuality and gender expression are on a spectrum. Gender identity is how you, in your head, think about yourself. It's the chemistry that composes you. Example, hormonal levels and how you interpret what that means. Okay, so a chemistry, a personal view, it's essentially saying a soul. Gender identity is a soul, is a spirit, it's how you're moved, it's your personal view of your own self, and then gender expression is the spectrum between feminine and masculine. Gender expression is how you demonstrate your gender based on traditional gender roles through the ways you act, dress, behave, and interact. In many ways, this graphic is accurate. Sexual orientation can vary, there can be different forms of gender expression, but there are some inaccuracies in the biological sex category. Sex isn't on a spectrum. There is female and male, and intersex conditions are not some ambiguous third thing. It says gender identity is how you, in your head, think about yourself. Your self-perception. Do you perceive yourself as being a woman or perceive yourself as being a man? Or do you perceive yourself as being just Gender queer, which would be in the middle. This is where it gets into the abstractions, into the spirituality, and on the radical end of it, into the cult thinking. Because the gender identity is the personality, the self-perception, it's applied through a lens of gender. If you're a male or a female and there are certain feminine, masculine ways of expression, or even physical characteristics or personality traits that are typically associated with one of the two sexes, that would be on the spectrum of identity identification with the feminine or masculine. But it's actually saying that your gender identity is how you perceive being the sex that you are. It's propagating that you can just identify with being a man or identify with being a woman regardless of biological sex. How you think about yourself, the separate thing called the gender identity. And this is a Gnostic religious idea that you can transcend the flesh through the soul. This is a very old, common idea in a lot of spiritualities that the soul, your perception or energy of what makes your unique consciousness up is transcendent above or somehow limited by or needs to escape the body, the biology, the sex. So propagating to kids that there is such a thing as gender queer, that your soul is queer, your soul is transcending your sex, it's transcending your sexuality, it's transcending all these other things that do have legitimate scientific basis for this abstract notion of self. As many detransitioners relay, Tumblr conveyor belted me and other users along 
from generally weird, precocious, intellectually curious, divergently minded, liberal value, naive child to wokus, trans, teen, mentally unwell, young adult. I am not suggesting that Tumblr caused my attachment problems. Low self-esteem, depression, anxiety, autistic traits, suicidal ideation, or other pre-existing vulnerabilities. But Tumblr exacerbated my vulnerabilities through exposure to an entire internet's worth of irrational ideology like queer theory, gender identity, and woke radical leftist social justice tactics which socially encourage the breakdown of self-concept into an identity crisis. This is a screenshot from Tumblr where an anonymous user sent a message to a trans user called Stealth Boy, and the user says, a friend of mine got top surgery and they swapped his nipples. Like he had a mole next to one, and after the surgery, the mole was on the other side. And Stealth Boy responds, oh my god? And another person posts a reaction image of a character from Sonic the Hedgehog saying, nurse? On some level, what else can be expected from a community of primarily young women and teenage girls, the demographic most known for the popularization of social trends, including those harmful and destructive? This screenshot has three examples of social contagion. The social contagion of the normalization of having mastectomy, having your breasts removed, called top surgery. And then the normalization that trans healthcare tends to just be shitty. That doctors play fast and loose with giving prescriptions and surgeries and they don't really follow up. Now the detransitioners talk about this in a very serious, sobering way to describe medical ethics issues. But in the trans community, it's laughed off. It's treated as just a normal part of being trans. It's part of the absurdity of it. Tumblr has a very dark sense of humor. There's a lot of absurdist memes. And as you can see with this meme, it's reacted to by pointing out that yes, that is messed up, but there's a sense of humor and lack of maturity in these posts because no one here is saying that shouldn't have happened, that's unethical, or are you going to follow up with that? And I get it's Tumblr, it's a meme and reactionary humor types of interactions, but it's on full display here, the way people communicate to each other. And this user Stealth Boy, this is a young woman calling herself a boy. I don't know how old this person is. They could be a teenager, they could be an adult, but they're going as a boy. And stealth means that they're not openly out as being trans. This is an example of social contagion between mentally ill and identity confused young girls talking about getting top surgery. Paramount to why we need to talk about Tumblr is not because of politics or gender, but because of the damaged mental health of the girls using it. If birds of a feather flock together, then birds with broken wings who can't fly must keep each other company. That has always been the social purpose of Tumblr no matter what sub-community or fandom you are a part of. My personal reasons for joining Tumblr are common to many kids with problems. I was also diagnosed as autistic since age 11, had severe depression and anxiety, and was already having suicide and self-harming thoughts. At 22, I would be diagnosed with CPTSD, and evidently the unhealed trauma was in full activation throughout all these years of Tumblr use, unbeknownst to me. My argument is not one of the chicken and egg to whether Tumblr causes users mental health issues or attracts users with pre-existing mental health issues. Rather, that both are clearly in play and we need to be alert to this. Tumblr was for me and is still a gathering place for a variety of birds with injured or broken wings who when gathered, encourage each other's actual disability or promote learned helplessness. It is the reality that Tumblr soaked my naive, traumatized, and vulnerable brain in some unhealthy ideas and gave access to disturbing content that I'm aware of become jaded to, such as gender nonsense, self-deprecating humor styles, romanticization of substance abuse, drug culture, mental illness, depression culture, antisocial behaviors, kink, and general pornography. Here is an example of a pornographic text post meme, and the caption is, all of Tumblr in one post. Censored user, the icon is censored because they are a not safe for work porn blog called Breedy FTM retweeted an account called Trans Boy Slut and Trans Boy Slut reposted and a user called Feral Boy F who says, Dom trans men who use the werewolf vampire gentleman aesthetic are so powerful and braver than any US Marine. 
and it's called all of tumblr in one post because we're seeing a plethora of trans sticks porn sticks and the fandom the fursanas the werewolf and vampire the aesthetics and then the common tumblr meme braver than any u.s marine because tumblr has an extremely anti-capitalist anti-traditionalist anti-conservative anti-patriotism, anti-police, anti-government sentiment. Braver than any U.S. Marine is a common phrase. Dom trans men, that is sexually dominant women who use werewolf vampire gentleman aesthetics, think early 2000s scene punk type girls with fake werewolf teeth or cat ears on braver and more powerful than any u.s marine speaking of porn tumblr users may remember the infamous tumblr porn ban where in 2018 the website banned all adult content including any instances of quote female presenting nipples this was the most rapid shift in the site's history where many users protested the pornography ban by deleting their accounts and moving to alternative platforms like discord even if they were not primarily porn-based accounts. Here is an example of a meme created in the midst or after the Tumblr porn ban about female presenting nipples because there was a debate about gender, of course, because here we have an example of biological sex coming into play. The reality that female breasts and nipples are structurally and aesthetically different to male presenting nipples. But then they didn't use the term female nipples because that would be insensitive to trans and queer people who are androgynous. If you were a trans woman and you didn't really look female, but you had an attempt at female presenting nipples, that would not be allowed. But if you were a trans man who had double mastectomy and you otherwise looked like a woman, but you had that surgery, then you'd be fine because those are no longer female presenting nipples. Many users had come to rely on the Wild West freedom of Tumblr for all sorts of purposes and viewed the banning of adult content since against the spirit of the platform and to live in a free speech and free expression. Many users enjoy non-pornographic but still used adult sexual themes in their creative, visual, or written work, and the algorithm Tumblr employed to detect, flag, and remove pornography, resulting in a clumsy, clear-cutting deletion of many innocent users' accounts, which they had run for years, including my own blogs. These users, fed up with the unjust deletion and removal of all sorts of content by the algorithm, left in droves as their blogs had either been permanently deleted or so much content had been censored that the experience was no longer enjoyable. Here's an image of a post-Tumblr porn ban screenshot, an example of content that has been deleted and you can no longer access. It says, this Tumblr may contain sensitive media. After 2018, Tumblr struggled to maintain its audiences or attract new members promoting its new logo to a darker party design. Here we see the classic old logo with the navy blue and the white T with the new logo, black background and a neon gradient, more vaporwave. Tumblr is the cool place. We're still cool, even though we don't have porn, we're still hip. From my personal use of Tumblr after the porn ban, I can guarantee the porn and adult themes have persisted. While dealing with my trauma things from 2017 to 2019, I became a regular consumer of intense porn content and a lurker in the kink community on Tumblr, which I can assure was the most vile and disturbing rabbit hole of sexual content I have ever found. Progressing further into the madness, Many people left Tumblr due to censorship, while ironically, users continue to police each other's thoughts and beliefs dogmatically. Nowhere is this clearer than in transgender ideology. You cannot use Tumblr without seeing posts about TERFs, trans exclusionary radical feminists, and how they are the worst people on the planet. When I was first using it, for years I had no idea what a TERF was. I started seeing the acronym pop up amidst other acronyms in Do Not Interact banners. These were graphics included beneath posts which explained who was and who was not allowed by the poster to interact with their posts. Here we have some examples of do not interact banner. Do not interact if homophobic, transphobic, and racist. Map, pedo, or just a big meanie with two cutesy cartoons of foxes with flowers and hearts. Another one says do not interact if 18 plus, kink, not safe for work, daddy dom, little girl, CDL, MDLB, ABDL, 
I don't even know what those mean. Even SFW variants. Map, Cloverfield, Pedo, LGBTQ plus phobe, Turf, or True Scum. Some of these sexual acronyms, I don't even know what that means. But we have don't interact if you post daddy dom little girl porn, minor attractive person porn, pedophilia, any type of phobicness, especially if you're a turf, or if you're true scum. True scum was the derogatory term for trans medicalists, people who believe that there is a biological mechanism for being trans and that not everyone is trans, specifically that non-binary people are not trans, they are attention seekers. And so there was a rift between the true scum and the non-binary. So this person does not want to interact with any of them. And another one says, do not interact if xenophobic, pro-shipper, gender critical, a turf not safe for work, or a cringe slash flop account. So this person's being pretty idealistic here. They don't want anyone to interact with their blog. They're saying, do not like my posts, do not comment on my posts, do not message me, do not respond or reblog my posts. That's pretty idealistic for the internet, and it's also pretty entitled. But this person's being really idealistic because they're saying no pro shippers. Shipping is when you fantasize about characters getting together in a romantic or sexual way. So <laughs> that's what a lot of Tumblr was about. So if you're asking not to have anyone who ships in any way interact with you, or <laughs> as well as cringe or not safe for work or gender criticals, you know, you're going to be interacting with very few people. Do not interact banners are an example of the manifestation of mental and emotional fragility within the internet age. They act as an extension of the safe space concept, where people's Tumblr blogs should be safe spaces from anyone or anything a user finds threatening. People often include do not interact lists on their blog descriptions to ward off unsafe interactions, along with their identifying information, interests, and pronouns. I started commonly seeing do not interact if you are a Nazi, racist, turf, swerf, or map written across the most unexceptional and harmless content, like a picture of a child's primary colored toy or a flowery meadow. What does a primary colored toy have to do with being trans? quite a bit. In the Tumblrverse, communities emerge, and then those communities are divided into infinite subcategories according to individualization of preferences and slight differentiation. The obsession with labels might be characteristic of types of brains which focus on categorization and micro-labels as a form of maintaining order and control, as seen in autism, ADHD, and OCD. It is no surprise that when browsing blogs with micro-labels, the vast majority will list some kind of diagnostic label, or one of these disorders, especially autism. In fact, the primary colored toy photos with the do not interact banners cluttering them is a specific subcategory of aesthetics that my autistic spectrum diagnosed self personally enjoys called Kidcore. Kidcore is a collection of child-friendly nostalgic images usually innocuous, colorful toys that remind someone of a more innocent, fun, and playful time. Here's an example of a kid core aesthetic post. These are L'Oreal Kids Extra Gentle 2-in-1 Shampoo Bottles. So very colorful, very cute. They're kids' soaps from 2000s. I had these when I was a kid. So they're colorful, they're fun, the graphic design is nice, innocent, nostalgic. As I've used Tumblr since detransitioning and becoming aware of my CPTSD, I've noticed a huge overlap between the childlike aesthetics, the do not interact banners, the micro labels of autism and other mental disorders, and you guessed it, an accompanying trans identity or gender identity micro label. There are dozens of young people simultaneously infantilizing themselves by trying to connect with their inner child through distracting carefree materials, while also experiencing various mental illnesses, autism, and often trauma, who are identifying as transgender. None of this is a coincidence, as it is now common knowledge that many young girls identifying as trans boys are autistic. So here is a screenshot of a perfect case study of a micro-label blog description where identity is the main focus. Their banner is the transgender pride flag with the neurodivergent symbol on it, probably to represent autism. Their profile picture is a cartoon image in front of a transgender pride flag. Obviously the trans pride flag is extremely important. And here is the person's description. Moronic slash Moro, that's their name, 20 years old, they, them. It's trans, agender, non-binary, demi, aero, bi, ADHD, and autistic, anxiety, and depression. 
semi-dead blog. My Twitter is where I vibe mo nowadays. If you joke about anything in my bio, fuck you. Trans is obviously an enormous part of this person's life. There are four references to trans in here, including two different pride flag graphics, and then the mental illness identity, or as it's trying to be promoted in a positive, sort of toxic positivity way. And then you can see the age regression, because no one who's using the term it, it's, for their pronouns is an adult-brained individual. And I don't mean that in, in a judgmental way. Someone who's using it, it has been dehumanized in their life. They've experienced some kind of trauma. And when you have experienced trauma, especially developmental traumas, this person's pretty young, they're only 20 years old. They are age regressing. This blog is infantilized with cartoon imagery, and they literally call themselves Moronic slash Moro. That is their nickname. It's actually hilarious, but it's not hilarious when you look at all of the other issues that they have going on. So they have ADHD and autism, anxiety and depression. And then in terms of their identities, I can break this down for you as I speak Tumblr. So they're a trans, agender, non-binary, demi aero bot. I will bet a lot of money that this is a young girl. She is trans, but she's also agender, but she's also non-binary. So again, she's confused as hell. She's androgynous. And then she's demi aero bi. Demi in this case means partial. They're partially aromantic. They're not completely aromantic, but they're partly aromantic. And then if they did have sexual attraction, they would be bisexual. So essentially, this is a very confused, traumatized, an autistic girl who has some sexual issues, if that wasn't already clear. And this is just one example. Trauma for autistic people is another discussion. But what I want to emphasize is how the layers of labels stack up so predictably for this population of teen and young adult girls who are using Tumblr and arguably using it in some of its most aggressively ideological and idiosyncratic ways, such as having the Do Not Interact banners to protect themselves from encountering harmful opinions or really just real-world adult relationships. In a concentrated cohort of traumatized children, it's no stretch of the imagination why these safe space measures are so active. Here is another example of an age regressed person. You can tell this is even more age regressed. So the title of their blog is, I like chocolate milk. She, her, autistic, I'm a drawer. I love G-I-R, cheese, and Fred Burger. Art tag is cotton candy doodles. And their tagged post is, hello there, rar. I go by cotton candy. I adore cute and nostalgic things, 2000s, 2010s. My blog is meant to be a safe place, and I don't feel comfortable with inappropriate or problematic content. So please don't follow or interact with graphics that say, I'm not random, I just have many th- Oh, squirrel! And then he was like, roar! And a cartoon cat dancing. Cartoons. Chocolate milk. This person is living in a toddler-like state. They go by cotton candy, and they really don't feel comfortable with inappropriate or problematic content, so just don't interact with them because this blog is a safe place. And it's not just a safe place for cute and nostalgic things, but it's clearly a safe place for learned helplessness, age regression, and an inability to heal, mature, develop, whatever happened. They're autistic, so they already have developmental differences, and they're not helping themselves by protecting themselves in this bubble wrap. Now for the TERFs. It is not just traumatized, emotionally regressed individuals who are speaking about TERFs on Tumblr, even though they are the ones who seem to be creating most of the Do Not Interact banners. TERF is the go-to Tumblr insult, and calling someone, quote, transphobic is the quickest way to get attention to your cause and humiliate another person. As being a hater of trans people is seen as punching down against one of the most vulnerable and innocent populations on the planet. This is one of my favorite old Tumblr memes. It's an edited photo of Fred from Scooby-Doo with lasers shooting out of his eyes in front of the trans pride flag. And the tag is be gone turf. So this is the infantilized humor. I think it's hilarious in an ironic way, but be gone turf is a common phrase. This is the equivalent of when a teenager, typically a teenage girl, is saying, kill yourself, LOL. Or can you just shut up, ugly? 12, 13 year old level insults. So be gone turf is one of the common phrases. All marginalized groups, particularly transgender people, are viewed as a sacred caste 
And conveniently, the term trans has become so watered down from its original meaning, it now functions as an umbrella term for any condition of words. All one needs to be trans in many circles is to declare you are something which is the opposite of something else. And that something else is almost exclusively cisgender or straight. Here is a text post that says, Critical thinking is cancelled. I will now be rating media by how much of the gay it has. So this is an obvious joke, but it reflects the culture of Tumblr. The things are really only as good as how queer they are, how anti-establishment they are, how anti-traditionalism they are, how anti-conservative they are, how anti-straight, how anti-cisgender. And if you really think about what these things mean, yes, there are some negative extremes of all these categories, but to be a straight cisgender person means <laughs> to be normal, means to be natural, means to be a heterosexual person who reproduces the species and who accepts their biological sex and maybe has a family and kids and thinks a lot of this woke stuff is college student age garbage, which it is. So critical thinking is canceled and really all that matters is media that reflects the gay. Cisgender is a term popularized in the past few years, which theoretically means that your internal gender identity, again, this abstract soul, matches the gender you were assigned at birth, aka you accept your biological sex. You just accept that you're in this body and you are not fighting against it. It normalizes the concept of transgender, which means not identifying with the gender you were assigned at birth, aka not accepting your biological sex and wanting to change it or doing things to change it. Being a commonplace occurrence where some people are mistakenly labeled as a gender that they are not inside. Gender identity is spiritual and ideological nonsense with no scientific backing, but it is increasingly popular among young people who socialize and express their personalities through gender labels. They are especially popular among populations who have obsessive compulsive needs to create micro labels. It would insist that their gibberish identities, such as fairy gender, wolf gender, skele gender, anything can be gender. And gender means your perception of your own energy, so your soul or spirit. So if you are vibing with wolves, if you're a wolf girl, you're a weird, you're into skeletons, you're goth, you're a delicate little fairy, you're into princesses, or maybe <laughs> people have seen the trans person who identifies as a red-tailed hawk. Whatever you're vibing with, like mac and cheese gender is what I vibe with, obviously funk gender. Those are no less valid than any other gender identity. These micro labels, which you can think of as nicknames and personality quirks, are given protection under the transgender umbrella, which is seen as progressive and vital because they're a vulnerable group which everyone must work profusely to lift and honor at any chance and at all costs. I think this one is worth repeating again. Obsessive compulsive personalities are creating micro labels based on abstract vibes and these vibes, all of these nonsensical labels and identities are given credence under the protection of trans and queer must only exclusively be perceived as progressive, as vital, as true, and also as vulnerable. And because they're vulnerable, everyone must constantly work under the social justice and woke creed if you aren't working to combat anti-queerness or transphobia or racism, that means that you are actually perpetuating it because there is no neutrality. There is no separation. If you are not working to help the oppressed, then you are the oppressor. That is the woke belief. The sad thing is that these are highly created people. These are people who have a strong propensity to get very deeply into things and to focus specifically on things so they can become very knowledgeable experts in their subject. They're creative. They're coming up with these, frankly, just completely moronic identity labels, but they're cutesy. There's probably like Antifa gender, but they're cutesy. They're fun. People make costumes around it and art and characters and all sorts of creative work is done. And that's great, but this is misguided creativity. And this cannot be understated because as each unique identity has its own pride flag that functions as pop art for queer artists to profit from and curse my love of colors because these are sometimes cool. Here's an example of pride flag pop art because anything can be pride. Everything is pride because everything can be queer because everything revolves around queerness because queerness is the subjective perception of the self. It's solipsistic, which is the philosophical belief of 
the only true reality being your own reality that you yourself can perceive and they're how the rest of the world perceives you is not accurate and not verifiable. So everything is queer and queerness is vulnerable and revered and sacred. So it must be upheld and you must have pride and cherish it at all times. Here are pride aliens with all the different pride flag colors. So they are pop art. Pride aliens, non-binary, aromantic, asexual, pansexual, transgender, bisexual, gender fluid, lesbian, and pride slash gay. You'll also notice that this pride flag is one of the updated progressive pride flags, which for some reason feels the need to specifically incorporate brown and black to represent race into the traditional gay pride flag, which just encompassed all LGB people of any race or background. So it's completely unnecessary. These signal inclusions with the in-group. It is a similar energy to the gay rights causes and pride movements of early Tumblr but now steeped even longer in radical woke nihilism, absurd queer theory, and many more mental health issues. No one could deny the nihilism and comorbid mental health issues within the LGB community and activist groups. The gay rights movement was a cause dedicated to legitimate liberation and fair treatment for individuals who were legally, socially, and culturally denied equality and dignity. The trans rights movement is a clusterfuck of mental health issues, which is stated by many LGB people to be actively harming the progress of the gay liberation movement and the efforts of transsexual people to live normal, healthy lives. None of this began on Tumblr, but for many young people, Tumblr was or is their introduction to social justice issues, queer theory, and a myriad of other topics that they are too immature and fluid in their identity construction, cough, cough, due to autism, to truly understand or form their own opinions about it. Here is a graphic of a very confused person, and this is one of the perfect representations of just the nonsense of the solipsistic queer theory. Things I am not. A girl in a boy way. A boy in a girl way. Things that I am. A girl in a not girl way. A boy in a not boy way. Hope that clears things up. Okay, so let me translate again. So this person, probably a girl, again infantilizing because they're using the language of girl and boy versus man or woman. This person doesn't want to be seen as a boyish girl or a girlish boy. They don't want to be seen as a tomboy. Their trans identity is invalidated if they're just seen as a tomboy because that's still trapping them in their fears of their biological sex reality, likely as a female. And yes, there are absolutely valid reasons for having these fears. These are existential, universal, and timeless fears living in a body that decays and dies, especially a sex body. They have their own set of problems, but they don't want to be seen that way. They don't want to be seen as a gender non-conforming girl. They want to be seen as a non-girl and a non-boy, meaning that they want to break away from the norms, stereotypes, and associations with what girl and boy even mean. They want to subvert gender so much in an ultra, super special, unique way, and they hope that clears things up. My intuition tells me that this person is a very immature, tomboyish girl who feels insecure about being a girl and who feels insecure about androgyny. Remarkably, it was the dreaded turfs and dog whistles for fascism, gender critical feminists on Tumblr who provided me with insight about how trauma can influence gender identity and motivate a transition. After I naturally followed a gender critical feminist blog out of shared opinions, I learned of detransition women and their stories being silenced by trans activists. Shortly after, a turf introduced me to a private detrans Facebook group, and I realized my transition was motivated by trauma, and the rest is history. It seems that now is the time for my generation to discuss the unregulated mess that was Tumblr for over a decade. Many people are nostalgic for, quote, the affectionately titled hell site, as how Tumblr describes itself on the app, or as how Tumblr describes itself in the app store, but may not have fully processed the depth of psychological and political instability that was normalized there. It is concerning that teens who grew up on Tumblr may have internalized much of the unhealthy mental illness culture and may still be struggling with self-defeatist thoughts, anxiety about making social errors, having trouble regulating emotion, controlling substance abuse, forming stable, rational identities, having professional social skills, maintaining a healthy sex life, and being resilient to distress. Tumblr propagated and continues to standardize nihilist 
nihilistic themes of evil, oppressive forces like corrupt and racist capitalist institutions, non-leftist ideologues, and any who attempt to share traditional wisdom as being to blame for all conceivable issues. As you can imagine, Tumblr is not a place where personal accountability or empowerment is usually internalized, except in virtue signaling posts about how white people are personally accountable for their racism, or in well-intentioned but often performative positivity posts. This is a graphic of a well-intentioned but performative positivity post that says in nice cursive letters, and the trans flag colors. Autistic trans women are astounding. I guarantee it was either a very sweet and confused young girl who wrote this, or a very autistic trans woman, which is a man. So again, a very Asperger's individual. And they are astounding. There's a constant feedback loop of posts talking about how it's valid to be depressed, how you are worthy despite being depressed, and self-care tips to cope with depression. But a lot of people appear to be stuck in the depression regardless. I believe most of these posts are earnest, and certainly I'd hope my own art and blogs would be taken as authentically positive and pro-social. But unfortunately, many of the people making self-love posts on Tumblr are the same people who constantly talk about how they're gonna make positive changes in their lives, but who usually fail to act on it. Here's an example of an earnest self-love post by the blog Perfect Feelings. Again, this idea of validating all feelings are valid. This comes from borderline treatment in DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy. The concept of validating your feelings is to say, yes, they are sensations, they are feelings, they are emotions, they are a chemical reaction that is happening and that is real. What you're experiencing is real. But the way that it's perceived in these types of situations is perfect feelings. Feelings are fine. And also maybe some toxic positivity. You can try again tomorrow. That is the sad reality of the internet. It is mostly just talk with little forward action. I was stuck in this cycle for years until I managed to get proper therapy and begin to improve my life. And I do not blame the vulnerable or naive on Tumblr for not being at the place of growth yet, especially as many are young and immature. But not everyone is young or has the excuse of trauma, or even if they do, they are old enough and aware enough to be causing harm to the naive and vulnerable among them. Sadly, Tumblr is a culture of self-destructive nihilism, which can become collective, socially destructive emptiness, which harms people's lives severely. Tumblr currently advertises itself on the App Store as culture, art, and chaos. And <laughs> that's also how I would describe my content. And is rated mature, 17 plus. I would rate mine like 25 plus. Evidently, Tumblr is self-aware and playing to the appeal of that Wild West environment, even if it has quieted down and cleaned up some of the frontier. Although I still browse Tumblr on occasion, I'm an adult with a critical eye who questions rhetoric, and who is mature, rational, and healthy enough through therapy and my own self-work to browse through art and content with adult theme. On my art blog, where I do nothing but upload my own artwork, I still routinely come across drug addiction, self-harm, and concerning mental health content from people mostly 16 to 25. Additionally concerning is the widespread propaganda of transgender ideology being passed around to kids, as if it's standard and healthy to tell 14-year-olds that if they are uncomfortable with their bodies, it likely means they are trans. And if their parents don't agree, they can be sent links to buy off-brand cross-sex hormones and binders in secret. Here is a screenshot from a clearly female person, an ROD girl, who says, I wonder if testosterone will give me pretty boy eyelashes. Trans non-binary, trans non-binary, testosterone, T-boy, HRT update, HRT diary. That stereotype of ROD girls, rapid onset gender dysphoria, teenage girls idealizing men and gay men through anime and having cartoon pretty boy eyelashes is legit. It's real. Testosterone giving you pretty boy eyelashes. Goals. Midst all these other unregulated adult issues, I must not fail to also mention sexual grooming of minors by adults and the subcommunities of MAPS, minor attracted persons, and pedophiles who have found refuge on Tumblr. As shown in the Do Not Interact banners along with TERFs, many users are wary of MAPS because of the community of groomers on Tumblr. Minors are putting their ages in their profiles next to their gender identities and mental illnesses in the hopes that adults will not interact with them. Understandably, this type of profile only acts to inform predators which are the most vulnerable young people among them. So those graphics I showed before with the do not interact banners and the profile saying, don't interact with me if you're an adult and a pedophile, it's a very childlike way of thinking. You're just showing them that you are prey and that you're not resilient to deal with it. 
and that you're naive enough to think that's going to prevent predators from interacting with you in the first place. Here's another example of someone that would be considered a target. This person's name is Juicy Juice Hypotenuse. They have a cartoon rainbow squirrel icon. Their description are a bunch of rainbow hearts and fruits. Their name is Sock. They are 21 plus. Toon, do not interact. Turf, not safe for work, kink, bigot, etc. Even though this person claims to be 21 plus, they go by the name Sock. And they also cannot stand to interact with bigots and turfs and not safe for work and kink content, etc. Does this person seem like they would be street smart? Does this person seem like they are developmentally at pace with an adult brain? I'm guessing not. To close this piece, I will share an experiment that I did in February 2022 to see what type of contemporary Tumblr content I could find just by scrolling through my feeds from my art blog. Keep in mind that I follow back everyone who follows my art blog for media engagement. So this is not a curation of my personal preferences. Scrolling for five minutes, I saw mostly photos and art pieces and a couple of text post jokes that I found funny. These are examples of why I enjoyed Tumblr in the first place. The sense of humor, the Gen Z humor, which I'll explain. Interviewer, can you explain this gap in your resume? Me, so that's called a lacuna. It refers to when manuscripts have missing parts lost at time. For example, the Epic of Gilgamesh has the next one is, may your next ibuprofen take effect swiftly and noticeably. These are two that I relate to and find funny. It may be subtle, but both posts have the depression culture element that I spoke about. The gap in the resume shows some instability with maintaining a job, likely due to mental health issues, and the ibuprofen likely references feelings of exhaustion and needing relief from some type of illness. I don't want to psychoanalyze the death out of text post jokes, but I do recognize the Tumblr humor sensibility that these types of jokes can represent. Most of the posts I browsed through were innocuous, but sure enough, this person's selfie popped up after only a little while. To completely reiterate my points about self-harm, identity issues, trans identification, and drug abuse. This is an example of someone who follows me. They, at least at the time, they were a fan of my blog. I've blurred their identifying information. But note the rampant self-harm scars all over the body. The mastectomy surgical scars across the chest from breast removal. The excessive facial piercings and overall hectic appearance. This person's URL also mentioned PCP, and I recognize the blog's URL as being a fan of my psychedelic art. I don't want to make fun of this person, especially as they're a fan of my art blog, but it's baffling how within five minutes of casual browsing, this type of content comes up on the Tumblr feed. It's everything that I'm talking about. A very confused, hurt, distressed person who is modifying their body through self-harm, piercings, tattoos, breast removal, and haircuts. And yeah, one of those things is not like the other thing. Breast removal is now similar to getting a tattoo or a piercing or dyeing your hair and it's not the same. It's not equivalent, it's not just cosmetic. It is removing functionality of organs for yourself and your potential child. This is a perfect case study of something that I just naturally encountered, and they also are normalizing drug abuse with PCP. While some users do have awareness enough to condemn outright self-harm, pro-eating disorder, graphic porn, or obvious destructive content, the normalization of other unhealthy behaviors, especially inflexible political behavior and self-defeatist attitudes, are not recognizable to those conditioned to think and act that way through primary socialization being on the hell site. Tumblr raised a generation of girls, gay kids, and misfits. This is what our education was. How many teenagers medicalized their bodies because of this disembodied, peer-attached mental illness an obsession-driven social justice and queer pride culture. Keep your kids off Tumblr and off of other social media until adulthood. Gen Z's parents didn't realize what their kids had access to. Propaganda and social contagion of every mental health issue imaginable. Thank you for reading. If you enjoyed this piece, you can follow my work here. I have an Etsy shop with lots of funky, cool stuff, D-Trans awareness material for activist purposes. You can follow me on Twitter at FunkGodArtist. I appreciate it if you would subscribe, like this video, leave a comment with your thoughts on these topics. Did you relate to this? Do you know someone? Did, how did you survive Tumblr? Are you a veteran of Tumblr? Are you worried about the culture? Leave your thoughts, share this material, start a discussion. You can also follow me on Substack at Funky Psyche. 
And if you want to help support D-Trans awareness efforts, I make content like this for free. So donations to the cause greatly help me continue to have the time to be able to make this content. Thank you and stay funky.